Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. December 8, 2020 the Snyder Walks It Back edition. We begin with our lead story in the NFL investigation of the Washington football team's history of discrimination and harassment. There is a lawsuit filed under seal that the team is actively fighting the NFL uh, reviewing. This uh, very interesting because it originally was brought to the attention of the investigative firm by uh, the firm, the team's former general counsel who sued to stop a disclosure of information in the uh, confidential settlement of 209. That was withdrawn, and now the team it plans to intervene to stop um, the NFL from looking at this lawsuit. This is not a criminal matter. It's not a, ra- uh, it's not a rape that we know of. Um, there's no minors involved. Yet, for reasons completely unclear, the Washington football team does not want the NFL to um, review this. This has obviously put the NFL's uh, investigative council at adverse relations with the Washington football team, but it really speaks to the entire culture of the Washington football team as uh, led by owner Dan Snyder. It's one of the worst-run franchises in all of American sports, and this really speaks to exactly why. Uh, next up, from uh, Mingi Sun reporting in the Risk and Compliance Journal in the Wall Street Journal, in the um, Defense Bill, Defense Authorization Act for 2021, currently in front of Congress and uh, probably will be passed and then on to the president for signature, there is a whistleblower in program incentivizing the reporting of potential violations of anti-money laundering laws. The um, program is part of an effort by the Treasury Department and specifically FinCEN to garner more information about shell companies in America. It's a uh, a proposed cash for tips program would be critical tool to identify and combat money laundering. uh, And while the uh, SEC has awarded uh, $731 million, uh, this would be money paid out by FinCEN. So uh, this is a pretty big deal. Uh, the uh, I reviewed some of the, the legislation, and it's very uh, pro-whistleblower, so it's uh, going to be interesting to see if President Trump <coughs> vetoes this bill or not. Uh, next up, uh, companies are facing new pressures to diversify boards. It's really unclear whether they even want to do so. Um, we've heard several uh, CEOs say there's just no one out there who has the experience to get on these boards, and uh to quote Sh- Colonel Sherman Potter, that's just hork- horse hockey. Recruiting these directors, however, draws a set of challenges for many companies. Uh, a board candidate's ethnic background or sexual orientation isn't always obvious, and scouting those requirements or candidates can require some unconventional digging. A bigger, more sensitive issue may be uh, saying the boardroom needs uh, something really more than a check the box exercise. So, It's going to be up to corporations to implement NASDAQ uh, guidelines around this. And finally, for those uh, compliance practitioners who translate uh, into foreign languages, be careful with humor because a recent movie um, got banned from China for the following um, line. A American soldier soldier named Chai uh, had um, his pants torn, and he says... um, Look at those knees. They're Chinese. Well, that was enough to have the movie banned from China for racist content. So uh, be careful when you engage in humor. It could backfire on you. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.